scales are the foundation of music when we sing a song the notes come from a scale add another singer and he or she will sing notes using the same scale this is called harmony add a guitarist to strum some chords and the chords used will come from the same scale each scale note can be a chord in fact when studying music theory we learn that chord structure is built by combining scale notes. These scale notes, when played as chords, are the most probable chords to use in a song. A key is simply the same as the scale you are using. If you are using a C major scale, you are playing in the key of C. The C major scale is made up of all natural notes, no sharps, no flats. The notes of the C scale are C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and the scale resolves on another C note, which is an octave higher than the starting note. Power chords are commonly used in popular music. These are not traditional chords at all, but are fifth harmonies. To build a power chord, choose a scale note. This will be your root note. Add the fifth scale note, counting from the root note. By applying this formula, you could build a fifth power chord to every scale note. So C being one, two, three, four, five, G being the fifth, C plus G equals a C5. The next note in the scale after C is D. So D being one, two, three, four, five, and A being the fifth, D plus A equals a D5. You could also play that with the open D. The next note is E. E plus B equals an E5. Then we have F. F plus C equals an F5. Next we have G. G plus D equals a G5. Then there's A. A plus E equals an A5. And the seventh tone is B. B plus F equals a B diminished because the F note is a flat five or diminished fifth above the B note. It is often altered to a five chord by raising the F or flat fifth note up to an F sharp. So all together for each scale note, we have a five power chord, C5, D5, E5, F5, G5, A5. If we follow the scale notes, we have a B diminished fifth, or we can alter it to a B fifth, and then resolve on the C5. chord is made up of three or more different notes. The most basic chord structure is made up of the first, third, and fifth scale notes, or intervals. The third interval is what gives each chord its emotional quality. The third interval can be a major or a minor. Without the use of a third interval, a group of notes does not qualify as a chord in music theory. To build a C chord from the C scale, you simply combine the notes 1, 3, and 5, or C, E, and G. 
Because the third interval is a major third, two whole steps distance, the first chord of this scale is a major C chord. To build the second chord in the key of C, start with the second scale note, D. When we apply the 1-3-5 formula, D is our first, F is the third, A is the fifth. Since F is a minor third, one and a half steps from D, our second chord in the key of C is D minor. To build the third chord in the key of C, start with E. When we apply the 1-3-5 chord formula, E is our first, or chord root note, G is the third, and B is the fifth. G is a minor third, or one and a half steps from E. So our third chord in the key of C is E minor. The fourth note in the C scale is F. Applied to the 1-3-5 formula, we have the notes F, A, and C. A is a major third or two whole steps distance from F, so our fourth chord in the key of C is F major. The fifth note in the key of C is G. And when we apply notes 1, 3, and 5, or G, B, and D, we have G major because B is a major third above G. A is the sixth note in the key of C. The 1, 3, 5 formula gives us A, C, and E. C is a minor third above A, so the sixth chord in the key of C is A minor. The seventh note in the key of C is B. The 1, 3, 5 formula applied to a seventh major scale note gives us an entirely different chord called a diminished chord. Here we have the notes B, D, and F. D is a minor third above B, and F is a flat fifth. So if we want to stay within our scale or within the key of C, our seventh chord will be a B diminished. Altogether, the C scale harmonized as chords is C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, and B diminished. Notes on the guitar repeat themselves often, and this allows us to play fuller chords rather than strumming only three notes at a time. For example, we know that C major is made up of the notes C, E, and G. If we look at a fretboard note chart, we see there are several options for playing a C chord in any given position. Because of this, the most common way to play a C chord on the guitar is with the C on the 5th string 3rd fret, E on the 4th string 2nd fret, G on the 3rd string open, another C on the 2nd string 1st fret, and another E on the 1st string open. Also, it does not matter what order you play the chord tones. You can mix them up, and as long as the notes C, E, and G are present, you will have a C chord. So you can add the low E note on the sixth string. Since G is a part of the C chord, you can add the high G note on the first string third fret. Or add it to the sixth string third fret. For the rest of this video, we're going to learn the most common guitar forms of each chord. If you'd like to explore more options for each chord, like we just did with the C chord, visit the stills section of this video and view the fretboard note chart. Below each chord chart, you will find the suggested fingering for each guitar chord. For the C chord, we see the first string is E open. The second string, first fret C, is played with your first finger. The third string G is open. The fourth string, second fret E, is played with your second finger. And the fifth string C is played with your third finger.
The second chord is D minor, which is formed by playing the first string first fret F note with your first finger. The second string third fret D note is played with your third finger. The third string second fret A note is played with your second finger. The fourth string open is a D note. The third chord, E minor, uses the first string open E, second string open B, and the third string open G. The fourth string second fret E is played with your second finger. The fifth string second fret B is played with your first finger. And the sixth string is open E. The fourth chord in the key of C is F, and is often considered the hardest basic chord to play because it requires you to bar your first finger across the first fret of all six strings. Because of this, I'll show you four variations of the F chord. Variation one is a three note F chord. Variation two is a four string chord. Next, a five string F, then all six strings. Depending on your skill level, you may want to play an easier variation of the F chord as we learn the rhythms and chord progressions. As you improve your guitar playing skills, I strongly recommend that you add the next variation until you can play the full six string F chord. The first string is not played. The second string first fret C note is played with your first finger. The third string second fret A note is played with your second finger. The fourth string third fret F note is played with your third finger. Here we are adding the first string first fret F note to variation one by barring the first finger across the first fret on the first and second strings. This is the same as variation two, but we're going to move the third finger to the fifth string third fret C note then replace the 4th string 3rd fret F note with the 4th finger. Here we are adding the full 6th string bar to variation 3. All of the fingering stays the same, but you are now adding the 6th string 1st fret F note with the finger bar. Remember, this is considered by many to be the hardest of the common chords, so if you can't play it yet, substitute an easier variation whenever the song calls for an F chord. The G chord is the fifth chord in the key of C. It is formed by playing the first string third fret G note with your third finger. The second string open is B, the third string open is G, and the fourth string open is D. The 5th string 2nd fret B note is played with your 1st finger. And the 6th string 3rd fret G note is played with your 2nd finger. The 6th chord, A minor, uses the 1st string open E note. 2nd string 1st fret C note played with your 1st finger. 3rd string 2nd fret A played with your 3rd finger. 4th string, 2nd fret E played with your 2nd finger, and the 5th string open A note. The 7th chord, B diminished, is the least popular chord of the bunch, and we won't be using too much of it in this chorus. However, to keep this lesson complete, here is a common way to use the B diminished. The 1st string is not used. The second string third fret D note is played with the third finger. The third string fourth fret B is played with the fourth finger. The fourth string third fret F is played with the second finger. And the fifth string second fret B is played with the first finger. So our seven scale notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B are now harmonized to common guitar chords. C, D minor, E minor, F, G, 
A minor, B diminished, and back to C. These common chords are often called open chords since they are located in the open position of the guitar neck. When you harmonize the notes of a major scale, the following formula is always present. The one chord is always major. The two and three chords are always minor. The four and five chords are always major. The sixth chord is always minor. The seventh chord is always diminished. This is just a general basis for chord theory. The more you play guitar, you'll find there are many exceptions to the rule. Now we are going to apply a rhythm pattern to our chords. And to help us keep time, we'll use a metronome set at 100 BPM, or 100 beats per minute. Since this is our first rhythm, we are going to start out basic with whole notes. A whole note equals four beats. So to use the C chord as an example, we will strum the chord on the one count, and let it ring out for two, three, four, and switch to the next chord, strum on one, ring for two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on. One, two, three, four. If you are a beginner guitarist, learning full chords on the guitar can be difficult. Even easy, common chords like the few we just played can be hard to achieve. If you are a beginner and are experiencing this, try abbreviating each chord. For example, when playing the C chord, you might try playing the notes on the first few strings rather than attempting the full chord. After you get the hang of playing a two or three note chord variation, add the next string to it. Do this with each chord until you have built up enough strength and accuracy to play full chords. If you are a complete beginner, you can still use this course, but you might want to spend a week or two with individual scale notes before jumping into chords. Our starter course, Guitar DVD Number 1, Beginner Basics and Beyond, might be just what you need to bridge the gap between individual notes, partial chords, and full chords used in songs. Musicians often use numbers in place of chord names when introducing a song to band members. For example, the chords of a song might be introduced as 145 or 1645. As we have learned, each note in a scale has a numeric value. C is 1, D is 2, E is 3, F is 4, G is 5, A is 6, B is 7, and then C is 1 again. When a scale has been harmonized into chords, the chord is often referred to with the same number, but written with Roman numerals. C would be 1, D minor is 2, E minor is 3, F is 4, G is 5, A minor is 6, B diminished is 7, and C is 1. Minor chords may also use lowercase Roman numerals. A chord progression is a group of two or more chords. In many cases, the most popular styles of music use only two, three, or four chords throughout the entire song. This includes blues, country, jazz, rock, R&B, reggae, and any form of popular music imaginable. Use these chord progressions to learn your favorite songs and even write your own songs. Let's start by learning a few two chord progressions. First we have a 1-4 progression, so in the key of C we know that 1 is a C chord and the 4 chord is F. Here we are going to apply a new rhythm pattern using half notes. A half note equals two beats, so we'll strum on 1 and 3 with our metronome set at 100 BPM. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
I'll be using the full F chord, but feel free to substitute one of the easier variations. Here's the 1-4 progression at 100 BPM. 1, 2, 3, 4. Keep in mind that a song could last three or four minutes, so if you would like to practice any of these progressions for a longer duration, use the metronome provided in the bonus section of this video. Let's move on to a 1-5 progression, which will be a C and a G chord. For our rhythm, we'll combine whole notes with half notes, so we'll be playing each chord for two measures. In the first measure, play the C chord for a whole note, one, two, three, four. In the second measure, use half notes strumming on one and three. One, two, three, four. Then switch to G for the whole half half rhythm. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Also, use the pause and rewind button as often as you like. One, two, three, four. We're going to cover a lot of information on this DVD, so it might be beneficial for you to learn one progression at a time, pause or stop the DVD to practice the chord progression, then come back to see if you can play the chords and rhythms in time with me on this recording. You might also benefit by practicing to change each chord in time with this recording, rather than try to learn the changes and rhythms all at once. Let's learn a 1-2 minor progression, which in the key of C will be a C to a D minor change. Here we will introduce a new rhythm using quarter notes. A quarter note receives one beat each, so we will strum along with all four counts. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And if this is getting a little fast for you, you may want to start strumming down and up. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I know that changing chords can be a little difficult for the beginner guitarist, so I'll show you a way you can cheat and still keep in time with the progression. If we take the C chord, strum 1, 2, and 3, and on the 4 count, strum the open strings while you lift your fingers to put them in place for the D minor chord. Then you strum D minor for 1, 2, and 3, and apply the same trick to the 4 count, strumming the open strings while you move your fingers into place for the C chord. So all together, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Eventually, you won't have to use this trick, but if you are just starting out, you might find it helpful. Another common chord change is the 1-3 minor, which translates to C and E minor in the key of C. For this rhythm, we will combine a half note with two quarter notes, strumming C on 1, hold for 2, then strum again on 3, and again on 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 and switch to E minor for the same rhythm. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Our next two chord progression is a one, six progression. In the key of C, this is a C to A minor chord progression. Here we'll use our previous rhythm using a half note, quarter note, quarter note 
but we'll play each chord for two measures before switching. One, two, three, four. The most common chord progression is the 1-4-5. Translated to the key of C, a 1-4-5 progression consists of the chords C, F, and G. There are many adaptations to the 1-4-5 chord progression. The first we will learn is the 1-4-5-1 progression. Altogether, the chords change from C to F to G back to C. Then we repeat the progression. Now let's play this introducing a bass note technique to our half quarter quarter rhythm. In the example below, first play only the bass note or lowest note of each chord for the one count. Hold for the two count, then strum the full chord on beats three and four. One, two, three, four. With this 1-4-5-4 four, four progression, we are introducing a half rest, which will produce two beats of silence. The easiest way to achieve the rest is to lay your picking hand across all six strings to prevent any notes from ringing out. For each chord, we will play quarter notes for beats 1 and 2, and a half rest for 3 and 4. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Next progression is a 1-4-5-5. Five, five. Here we're going to introduce a quarter rest on the fourth beat. So strum on counts 1, 2, and 3 and rest for 4. 1-2-3-4 So far we have been counting solid beats using whole notes which receive a four beat duration. One, two, three, four. Next we learned half notes receiving a two beat duration. One, two, three, four. Quarter notes receiving one beat each. One, two, three, four. Next we'll be learning eighth notes. An eighth note divides a beat into two pulses so the new count is one and two and three and four and. The rhythm exercise below uses all four note types. Whole, half, quarter, and eighth notes. One, two, three, four. Here's a one, five, four, five progression. Let's learn this progression while incorporating quarter notes and eighth notes to our rhythm. We'll play the bass note of each chord for the one count, then strum for two and. Bass note for the three count, strum for four and. So all together it's one, two and, three, four and. One, two, three, four. The 
one, six, five, four starts with C, then moves down in pitch to the A minor, our six chord, G the five, and F the four chord. We'll learn this with an eighth note quarter rest rhythm. Strum on one and, rest on two, strum on three and, rest on four. One six four five progression has a very traditional 1950s ballad feel to it. We're going to learn the one six four five with a bass line and partial chord technique applied to an eighth note rhythm. For the one count, pick down on the bass note of the chord. And for the and count, strum up on the first few strings of the chord. Repeat this for counts two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and one and two and. You can also cheat at this rhythm if it's giving you a hard time. Just skip playing the four count. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. One, two, three, four. And if you want to get creative, you could find bass notes to include in between each chord. Raking strings between chords is an effect you can add to make any rhythm stand out. This is achieved by loosening up on the notes with your playing hand, so you are touching the strings but not holding or allowing any notes to ring out. You could further enhance this technique by resting the palm of your picking hand across the strings while you are strumming. Our next rhythm is a 1-2-3-4 chord progression. In the key of C, that is C, D minor, E minor, and F. Here we'll play eighth notes along with the raking technique. Rake on the downstroke and let the chord ring out on the upstroke. Altogether, the rhythm is one and two and three and four and. One, two, three, four. You can often make a quick change in a song or chord progression by substituting different chords. For example, it is common to substitute the two chord in place of the four chord. So instead of playing one, four, five, five, substitute the two chord or D minor for the F and play a one, two minor, five, five progression. Instead of playing a one six four five, you can.
can substitute a 1 6 2 5. You can substitute the 3 chord in place of a 5 chord. So instead of playing 1 4 5 5, try 1 4 3 3. Or one four three five. Or one four five three. Sometimes you could even substitute the three chord for the one. So instead of playing one four five five, you can try three four five five. You can also substitute the 6 chord for the 1, which will give your song a minor feel. Every major key has a relative minor key named after the 6th interval. The key of A minor is identical to the key of C major. It uses the same notes and chords. It is called a relative minor key. Revisiting some of our previous chord progressions, let's substitute the 6 chord for the 1 chord. A simple two chord progression can be a 6-2 change. In the key of C, that will be an A minor to a D minor. For this progression, we will introduce the arpeggio technique, which sounds the tones of a chord in succession rather than at the same time. This is picking out the individual notes of a chord rather than strumming them. You could play the notes with a pick or with the fingers of your picking hand. So let's start with a quarter note rhythm. One, two, three, four. Here's a 6-4 progression that has us switching from an A minor to an F. We'll learn this arpeggiating quarter notes and eighth notes. The count is one, two, and three, and four. In the 6-2, 6-3 progression, we are switching from A minor to D minor, back to A minor, then to E minor. Let's use quarter rests and eighth notes for our rhythm, placing a quarter rest on the one and three count. So for each bar, the one count is silent, strum for two and, rest for three, strum for four and, one, two, Advanced players may also want to include a bass note on the one count of this rhythm. This 6-5-4 rhythm has us moving down in pitch from A minor to G to F. Here we'll split the first measure in half, playing A for beats 1 and 2, G for beats 3 and 4, then hold F for the whole second measure. The rhythm is a consistent two eighth notes played, then two eighth notes rate. Two, three, four. 
Now that we have learned all of the basic chords in the key of C and ways to use them, let's move on to another popular key in music. The key of G consists of the notes G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Just like the key of C, we will give the key of G a numeric value. So G is our one, or first interval, A is our second, B is the third, C is the fourth, D is the fifth, E is the sixth, F sharp is the seventh, and the scale is resolved on a G octave. Giving each note a numeric value allows us to apply the same universal chord formula to all musical keys. When we build full chords in the key of G using the 1-3-5 note formula, the chord types will be the same as they were in the key of C. The first is always a major chord, so G will be major. Here we are introducing another option for playing the G chord. Instead of playing the second string open, we are adding the third fret D note with the third finger, and we're playing the first string third fret G with the fourth finger. The second and third chords are always minor chords, so A will be a minor chord, and B will be a minor chord. The B minor chord is a bar chord, like the F chord that we learned in the key of C. However, the B minor is a little easier because you only have to bar the first through fifth strings with your first finger across the second fret. With the finger bar in place, the second string third fret D note is played with your second finger, the third string fourth fret B is played with your fourth finger, and the fourth string fourth fret is played with your third finger. The fourth and fifth chords are always major, so C will be major and D will be major. This new D chord can be played just like the D minor chord, but slide your first finger up one fret from F to F sharp. Here's D minor, and here's D. The sixth tone is always the relative minor key, so E will be minor. And the seventh is always diminished. So the F sharp chord built from the G scale will be an F sharp diminished. You can play this chord by barring the third through sixth strings on the second fret. Play the fourth string, fourth fret F sharp note with your third finger. Play the fifth string, third fret C note with your second finger. Strum strings six, five, four, and three only. Strings one and two are not used. Here are the basic chords from the key of G played with a tempo. One, two, three, four. Now we could take any chord progression that we have learned and apply it to the key of G. So the 1-4-5-4 progression applied to G is now G, C, D, C. Let's apply it to a common quarter and eighth note rhythm that uses a tie. Strum on one, let ring for and. Strum on two, and, let ring for three. Strum on and, four, and. All together slowly. One and two and three and four and. Here it is at 108 BPM. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Let's
Let's take the same rhythm and apply it to a 1-6-4-5 progression. Applied to the key of G, that's G, E minor, C, and D. One, two, three, four. So far we have learned a handful of two and four chord progressions. These progressions can be added together to make longer progressions. You can also extend or shorten the duration of each chord. Here we'll take a look at extending these progressions to make an eight bar or eight measure progression. It may be easier to look at this as two groups of four, in which case the first half will be one, five, four, four, or G, D, C, C, and the second half will be one, five, one, five. G, D, G, D. Here it is played with the previous rhythm. One, two, three, four. Here we have a 1-1-4-4, one, 1-5-1-1 one, four, four, one, one, one in the key of G. This is G, G, C, C, G, D, G, G. One, two, three, four. There are a lot more progressions that can be applied to the key of G and any of the musical keys that we will learn later. We spent more time learning chord progressions in our first key, the key of C, so you can get the hang of using the number system. Be sure to take the time to apply your favorite chord progressions to every musical key. For a list of each chord progression used in this video, visit the bonus stills section. There you will also find the sheet music showing all of the chords from each key. This will also allow you to practice this material at your own pace, slower or faster than what is recorded. After the key of G, many students of music move on to the key of D which uses two sharp notes. The key uses the notes D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, then D again. Following the same universal pattern, in the key of D, the 1, 4, 5 chords will be major, the 2, 3, and 6 chords will be minor, and the 7th chord will be diminished. In the key of D, the 1 chord is D. The 2 chord is E minor. The 3 chord is F sharp minor. F sharp minor is a bar chord. It's very similar to the F bar chord that we learned in the key of C. Let's start with the F bar chord. Lift your second finger off the third string and the chord is now F minor. If you move everything up one fret, it now becomes F sharp minor. F sharp minor is the three chord in the key of D. So we started with D our one chord, E minor the two chord, and now F sharp minor the three chord. The 
four chord is G. The fifth chord is A major. It's held a little different than the A minor chord. The first string is open E. The second string, second fret is C sharp, played with your third finger. Third string, second fret is A, played with the second finger. Fourth string, second fret is E, played with the first finger. And the fifth string is A open. You can also cheat at the A chord by barring the second fret on strings four, three, and two. If you do this, be sure you don't sound the first string. The sixth, a relative minor chord, is B minor. And the seventh chord is C sharp diminished. Here they are with the tempo. Here's a 1-4-5-4 chord progression in D, using D, G, and A. If you recall, we've learned to use bass notes. We've learned to arpeggiate chords. And a few different strumming patterns. From this point on, when I introduce a progression, I'll leave it up to you to decide what strumming or picking pattern you would like to use for each chord. You may want to mimic what I am playing, or you can accent my playing with your own style. As long as you change to the correct chord in time with me, the two will blend together. One, two, three, four. <laughs> This is a minor progression using B minor as the 6th chord, G for the 4, back to B minor, then to A as the 5 chord. One, two, three, four. Here's a 12 bar progression using the 1, 4, 5 chords. The first group of 4 hangs on the 1 chord for 4 measures or 4 bars. In the middle section, we switch to the 4 chord for 2 measures, then back to the 1 chord for 2 measures. The last section turns the progression around by switching to the 5 chord for the first measure then a quick change to the four chord for the second measure, and back to the one for the last two measures. The next musical key we will learn is the key of A, which consists of three sharp notes. The scale is A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, then back to A. The one chord is A major. The two chord is B minor. The three chord is C sharp minor, which is identical to the B minor chord but played two frets up. The four chord is D. The 
5 chord is E major, which uses the same frets as the E minor chord, but you add the 3rd string 1st fret G sharp note with your 1st finger. The 4th string 2nd fret E is played with your 3rd finger, and the 5th string 2nd fret B is played with your 2nd finger. The 6th or relative minor chord is F sharp minor. The major 7th chord is G sharp diminished. This is the same shape as the F sharp diminished from the key of D, but it's played 2 frets higher. This progression changes from A to C sharp minor to B minor, then E. One, two, three, four. Here's a quick changing 12 bar progression. Remember, we're in the key of A, so A is the 1 chord, D is the 4 chord, and E is the 5 chord. 1, 2, 3, 4. Key of E is a very popular musical key, especially for guitar players. It uses four sharp notes, and the scale is E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E. The one chord is E, the two chord is F sharp minor. Move the F sharp minor up two frets, and you have the three chord, G sharp minor. The 4 chord is A, the 5 chord is a B bar chord. To play this, bar your 1st finger across the 2nd fret of the 1st through 5th strings. Play the 2nd string 4th fret D sharp note with your 4th finger. Play the 3rd string 4th fret B note with your 3rd finger. And play the 4th string 4th fret F sharp with your 2nd finger. You can also cheat at this chord by holding the 5th string 2nd fret B with your index finger and bar strings 4, 3, and 2 with your 3rd finger. Be sure not to play the 1st string if you're going to use this variation. The relative minor 6th chord is C sharp minor. The 7th chord is D sharp diminished. This D sharp diminished is played just like the B diminished from the key of C, but it's played four frets up. One, two, three, four. One, 
The key of B uses five sharp notes out of seven. The notes are B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B. Almost every chord is a bar chord, but they all use fingerings and shapes that we have already learned in other keys. Starting with the one chord, B, the two chord is C sharp minor, three chord is D sharp minor, the four chord is E, five chord is F sharp, the relative minor six chord is G sharp minor, the seventh chord is an A sharp diminished. One, two, three, four. The key of F is the first key to use a flat note in the key signature. The notes are F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F. The one chord is F, the two chord is G minor, the three chord is A minor, the four chord is B flat, five is C, the relative 6 minor is D minor. The 7th chord is E diminished. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The key of B flat uses two flat notes. The scale is made up of B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat. B flat is the one chord. The two chord is C minor. The three chord is D minor. Four is E flat. Five is F. Relative minor six chord is G minor. A is diminished. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. E flat uses three flat notes in its key signature. The scale notes are E flat. F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D, E flat. E flat is the one chord. 
F minor is the two. G minor is three. A flat is the four chord. B flat is five. C minor is the relative minor or six chord. And D diminished makes up the seventh chord. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The key of F sharp uses six sharps in the key signature. The notes are F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B, C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, and F sharp. If you have studied basic music, you may have learned that there is no such thing as an E sharp note. However, when studying advanced key changes and key signatures, we learn that the key of F sharp is an exception to the rule. The seventh note of the F sharp scale is technically an F note. However, it's named E sharp to fit in with the rest of the notes. In the key of F sharp, the one chord is F sharp, the two chord is G sharp minor, the three chord is A sharp minor, the four chord is B, the five chord is C sharp, the six chord is D sharp minor, and the seventh chord is E sharp diminished. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The key of D flat uses five flat notes. It is made up of D flat, E flat, F, G flat, A flat, B flat, C, and D flat. The one chord is D flat, the two chord is E flat minor, three is F minor, the four chord is G flat, the five chord is A flat, the relative minor sixth chord is B flat minor. The seventh chord is C diminished. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The key of A flat uses four flat notes. The scale is A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, G, A flat. The one chord is A flat, two is B flat minor, three is C minor, four is D flat, 
five is e flat the relative minor six chord is f minor the seventh chord is g diminished This wraps up Easy Guitar Chords DVD. We've managed to cover every key of music, and therefore every major and minor chord. We've also learned quite a few progressions and tricks along the way. Take some time to soak this all in. Experiment with your favorite chords and progressions. Write your own songs and learn the songs that have influenced you to play the guitar. After some time off, play along with this video again. It will be rewarding to see how much you've progressed as a musician, and you might find something that you've overlooked on a previous viewing.